Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. We're trying to make sense of the Arizona real estate market. And more importantly, you get armed with information so that you can be a hit at all the cocktail parties. When somebody says, have you heard what's going on in the real estate market? That's your moment. You'll know. So there's an old saying that says, we know what we know, but we don't know what we don't know. So I thought I'd kind of share some information about where we are today. And my source is the Cromford Market. Cromford Report, and uh, we're re very blessed in Arizona to have these uh, these people grab the data for us. And uh, there, you know, there's another national one called Axios, and it's very good as well. For, I know for agents that uh, are not in Arizona, they've asked me, where can I get this information? Well, the Cromford data is only for the Arizona market, and mostly for the Maricopa County area in general. Axios is a service that you can pay for. Uh, that will let you drill down to your your city. So I recommend that if you're not from Arizona. But the other thing I like is that a lot of the numbers and stuff that you see coming out now from places like CoreLogic, uh, Realtor.com, Zillow, those numbers are November. So we're sitting here the week before Christmas, and uh, we get to look at data um, from Cromford Report that's today. And uh, but they put out uh, a monthly report and the, where they give presentations to uh, people in the industry around the valley. And so I kind of clipped some information from that and thought I'd give you a concise view of where we're at, because, as you know, uh, real estate right now is just a very hyper interest rate sensitive market. How else would you explain that new construction is doing so well? Uh, new construction is able to buy down interest rates down to like 4.9 and uh, move their inventory. Now, the question was raised by one of our viewers. How come they can do it and resale homes can't because they have restrictions? Uh, the rules are the same. So it all depends. You can only contribute so much towards a rate buy down or only so much towards seller contributions depending on how large your down payment is. So if you put down a 20% down payment, you can obviously get more contributed towards buying down the rate than if you put down a 5% down payment. So there's very defined um, monetary rules in there that say, okay, well, they can contribute this much if you put down 5%, this much if you put down 20 So um, they don't have a different set of rules. They just have deeper pockets right now than Bob and Mary Smith down the street. And so, so what's happening is let's first take a look at what's really going on with the central bank and what that impact is when they raise or lower rates on real estate and why there seems to be a disconnect between they just raised the rates, but mortgage rates went down. Went down. I don't get it. So I'm going to touch on that a little bit. But first, we want to look at some of the objectives that Chairman Powell had. And this is going to go back to, and I'm going to move my mug, um, this first one goes back to June 2022, and he says, over the coming months, we'll be looking for compelling evidence that inflation is moving down consistent with inflation returning to 2%. Well, you know, fast forward to today, and interest rates or inflation is coming down, but not near at the rate that they want it to. Number two, this one's important, and this was in September. A balanced housing market. For the longer term, what we need is supply and demand to get better aligned so that housing prices go up at a reasonable level, which is usually 4% 4, 4 a year, and at a reasonable pace that, keep pe that people can afford houses again. We probably, in the housing market, have to go through a correction to get back to that place. That tells you a lot right there, right? So the central bank is saying, you know, we're going to need a correction. We're way off balance here. House prices are way too high. Interest rates are way uh, were way too low and it was fueling it. Uh, I had somebody make comment yesterday that said, well, do you think that the iBuyers were responsible for that, like Open Door and Offer Pad? And I said, no, they weren't big enough. But look, money was free, you know, 2 to 3%. That's free money. So everybody was in the game. Every institutional investor, every flipper, every iBuyer, and every neighbor of yours wanted to buy a house because the rates are so cheap. So everybody was running out with this cheap money, competing with each other, and we ran out of supply and we just kept bidding, bidding, and bidding. So it's really hard to pin it on one person or one entity, except just to say the money was free 
people took advantage of that. And that's what happens. Then he comes on along and say, they want a balanced labor market. Powell acknowledged the slowing of economic growth. This is just in last month while stressing that the labor market remains out of balance and recent inflation data may have to come in higher, may again come in higher than expected. So here's an interesting thing. I just talked about central bank raised the rates, but mortgage rates went down. How come that is? Well, if the Fed raises interest rates, what mortgage rates do kind of depends. And it says here, it depends on what the market outlook for the future of the economy is at large said Karen Call, who researches housing and financing at the Urban Institute. The market he's talking about isn't the market for buying and selling houses. It's the market for buying and selling mortgages. Here's the kicker right here. Most mortgages made in the U.S. end up being bundled and securitized into investment products, bonds that are eventually sold to investors across the world. When last month's inflation numbers came in better than expected, hedge funds, bond funds, and banks across the world said, huh, maybe the Fed will slow down its rate hikes now. So they bought a bunch of mortgages while rates were pretty high, thinking, let's get in while home buyers are still paying that sweet 7%. So central bank comes in, raises rates 0.5, mortgage rates go down, Inflation looks like it's coming down. So the bond traders are saying, well, it's going to be a lot harder to get a 7% return on our money. Let's go out and get some of these right now. Let's lock them down. And they did. And the more the bond market goes up, the more interest rates go down. It's kind of an inverse relationship. So, And if you look at the 10-year treasury, which is probably closely, more closely tied to interest rates than anything else right now, you can see that, and I wish this would show up a little higher. There we are. Um, you can see that the blue line here is um, um, the 10 year treasury, and the gold line here is interest rates. I believe that's what I'm looking at here. And uh, anyway, they both run in tandem. Notice that? See, they're at 7.2, now they're down 6. So that's the number to watch if you're trying to figure out the direction of uh, mortgage rates. Just take a look at 10 year treasuries. Where will mortgage rates likely go next year? Here's the forecasting. Now, before I get into this, I want to remind you that Redfin last year said that this year, at the end of the year, we would see mortgage rates at 3.6%, and that that would likely slow down real estate. 3.6% right now would be putting gasoline on the fire. So all the big dogs don't get it right. Some do, some don't. I'm not going to get it right. See that dollar behind me up here? I bet Pat at Price Mortgage a dollar that we won't see interest rates in the fives in the first quarter of next year. And I think I'm going to be ripping that dollar off and giving it to Pat. So I don't feel bad because even the big ones are wrong. And here's what they're saying now. Hale and Realtor.com 2023 rates will average 7.4%. That's pretty aggressive. Followed by early rate hikes in the first half of the year with a slight retreat to 71 to near end. And we're about 6.1 now. Freddie Mac estimates rates will be 6.4. Fannie Mae says 6.8. Goldman Sachs, 6.2. MBA Mortgage Broke Bankers Association rates will be around 5.2 by the end of 2023. They tend to be the closest out of all those people that make guesstimates on mortgage rates. Now, the real issue that we have non affordability is payments versus the price. How much, how much does it cost to borrow the money? How much is that home? And that went all out of whack. And you can see on this chart that it certainly did. So the payments here, look at that. It's up to 2818 This is based on a 1500 to 2000 square foot home in August of 22, or this would be October 22. And then now it's come down. And if it stays on this current rate, they're saying the estimated payments... Um, with a 2-1 buy-down year one will drop significantly. So what if medium prices decline 3 to 4% over three months and mortgage rates decline to 5%? Well, I think the market's going to get pretty active again. Pre-foreclosures, this is the one that I really want you to watch carefully right now in that the headlines are throwing things at you saying foreclosures are up 65%. You've heard me say before that 
a large percentage of a small number is still a small number. So uh, a foreclosure going from a really tiny base up 69% sometimes doesn't even show up on the chart. And you can see on this chart down here where it says this is the period where there were no foreclosures because everybody was in forbearance. So now as we exit that forbearance period, some people came out of it okay, some people didn't. And uh, so there's a bunch of pre-foreclosures out there, but really, really tiny amounts. Nothing that even comes close to what we saw back here beginning in 2009. Affordability is the problem. See this green area here? Between 60 and 75 is considered between 60 and 75 percent of the average wage earner can afford the average priced home. Well now that's all the way down to 42.2 percent and uh, that went way down when the mortgage hikes showed up. So that's our problem. We just can't afford the homes right now. You knew that. Open door. This is how many losses they had in June. This is how many homes they sold in this market in one month from, in our, from June to October. All those dots are homes that they sold where they didn't make a flipping dime. MLS rental supply. Finally, some cheery news. Look at the supply numbers for homes that are for rent that are showing up on the multiple listing service. So it's up 192%. And we're starting to see rent come down. Not enough yet to make you go out and pop the champagne cork. Um, rental rates versus listings closed. Okay, here they're showing an example here. Listed at twenty-two fifty, closed at twenty ninety-five. That's good news. Hopefully, that will continue to come down and make rent a little affordable. That's what I'm hoping for. Here's the good old Cromford Market Index, and you can see that that it peaked right around here in February, and then it started coming down in twenty twenty-two. Now, in April and May, as this was going down. This is a precursor to say, market looks like it's changing. And then lo and behold, in um, right about the end of May, the wheels just fell off the wagon. And we're down here in what we call a balanced market down in this yellow zone. So here's how prices respond to supply and demand indexes. So as you can see here, this is kind of like this pinkish area. Supply was way up here, like 58,000 homes for sale. There was no demand. So prices just, you can see this line right here, prices just fell off the map. Everybody had those bad mortgages. We had all these foreclosures. Things just went to hell in the handbasket. The opposite happened over here. So the demand side is the green here, and the red was supply. Supply was really low. Remember those times we were looking and going, we only have 4,800 homes on the market. We had less than seven days inventory on the market. Well, look at that did to prices. It drove them up. Why? We had free money. So the interest rates were incredibly low. Supply was low. Demand was huge. Prices had nowhere to go but straight up. Well, now it's changed, but it hasn't changed that drastically yet. You can see that supply kind of started coming up, and now it's kind of coming back down, and demand kind of flatlined, and demand is going down. That immediate number right there is seasonal. So all eyes are on January. We will see what happens in January. As we take another look here, and let me roll over here, um, your list price is too damn high. If you're listing your house, uh, people want uh, a bargain. And uh, tell us where the market was, not where it's going. Uh, spot on the carpet, let's offer them half price. Sellers, um, buyers are in no mood to even pay the listing price. Some of the sellers out there I've seen... Um, I don't think understand the situation that we're in and how low demand is. They're going, well, Bob and Sally down the street, they sold their house for $525,000 in March, and they didn't have a pool, so I'm, I'm worth five fifty dollars right now. And I'm not budging. Well, then you're going to sit there. Um, so you really need to be on top of what's going on in the market now if you're going to list your home. Buyers the same way. I realize that everybody wants a bargain, but there isn't a whole lot of appetite for extremely low ball offers. Um, it's, it's, uh, um, prices are dropping. As you can see here, the median appreciation, median sales price are coming down. We're down to last year. So we are down. We've erased all of the gains that we had in 2022. The prices went up. 
and now they're back down. And so that's where the market is now. Now, there is a lot of speculation on interest rates, and you're going to see it in the next few weeks, that maybe in February we'll see them come down. There's also very compelling arguments to say that interest rates will continue to go up, mostly because that's what the Fed chairman says. He goes, we're going to raise them, and we're going to keep them there until we hit our target. We're at 7.1% inflation right now. His target's 2 we could be in this situation for a long, long time. And when I say long, long, we could be looking at this for 18 months. That's a long time in the real estate world. If you're out there trying to buy or sell a home, it's a long time to be wringing your hands wondering what's going on. Uh, there are some bargains that show up from time to time out here. Um, maybe they won't look like bargains in a year, or maybe they will look like a real bargain in a year. We don't know. So as we go through and we try to guess where the market's ending up in Arizona right now, um, starting the second week of January, we should see some changes. Is inventory going to remain low? Is it going to start shooting up like a rocket? Is demand still going to stay at about 2,200 contracts every seven days? Those numbers will move. We just don't know how fast, how high, or how low they're going to go. So I hope this gave you a backdrop of where we are and why I want to look at where we're going to be in the second week of January, and we're going to discuss it right here. So I hope this finds you well. Thank you. Take on the day and have a great week.